16 years ago in Raleigh, North Carolina, I was participating in a whiteboarding session with very senior consulting architects. I was in this meeting because I was an application developer, a software engineer, and, my, and we, were, we were working a problem to, do, to speed up what at the time was a, a essentially a big data problem, a, a big data system. We needed, to in, we needed to increase its efficiency. We needed to reduce its time of execution, its runtime. And I was focused on code improvements that would bring milliseconds per node, per execution per node. And they told me, um, rather graciously, that that was a great idea. However, looking at it from an architectural and a strategy perspe perspective can save not milliseconds, but minutes, and in the aggregate, over time, days. That 20-minute conversation, it's probably more, more or less, 20 minutes, that had an impact on me which has lasted me all this time. That you find ways to do things better, to be more effective, to be more efficient. And coincidentally, that was when we used to use clouds originally on the whiteboard. We'd draw a cloud where we'd have boxes and an arrow to, the, to this, this place where the magic happened, and then a, another arrow that came back into another, went out to another box. I can see that we have a shared experience. Agile cloud security. So first of all, why me? I'm, I'm Paul Oakes, and, um, but why, why, why am I talking to you about agile cloud security? Well, I have 16 years of agile experience. I've, depending upon how uh, rigorous your definition of cloud experience is, I have up to 10 years and security throughout my 20 year career. And most recently working as a enterprise security architect for TD Bank. I'm also a, an AWS instructor and I teach Agile and security classes as well. Plus also you can see that there's a whole line of certifications. So I have an interest in this subject matter as they do span all three disciplines. This is going to be a conceptual roadmap for you. Conceptual because each of these topics are at least a three, a, would, would, would fill three day sessions worth of training, just on agility, just on cloud security. So the conceptual roadmap is to challenge you to think, how can I use this? How is this valuable to, to my organization? Allow it to come up against your preconceived notions and ask yourself, is this really possible? First, and since we're all security professionals, we have a rigorous perspective on what we, on how we understand things. So before we get into the flow of the, of the talk, let, ask yourself, what is agile cloud security not? Because as, as security professionals, Sometimes we like to think in terms of the, the, uh, the alternate case or the negative case. So what is, it, what, what is it not? Not agile means it's inflexible. It does not harness or, or respond to changing requirements, changing market forces, changing uh, 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 team abilities. Not cloud. That means you have capital expense. You have fixed data center compute capacity and not security means that it's a vulnerable system. So what is agile cloud security? Agile cloud security is customer focused. It's communication based. It comes, that, that 
that focus comes from the agile perspective of being reality driven. Agile harnesses change for the benefit of it, the customer. Harnesses change for the benefit of the developer and for the team. However, to do that, it doesn't, op it doesn't take out the crystal ball and try to come up with the big upfront requirements and design. The only constant is change. So it harnesses change. And it's risk and value based. Agility has risk and value, has a, a basis in risk and value from the very beginning. The, the work is done in order of risk and value priority. Agile Cloud Security extends that definition of risk to include the risks that we think of as security professionals and the, how we discover those risks and the components thereof, how we calculate those risks. And based on the components of the risk will be incorporated with the Agile perspective. And it also incorporates the use of cloud because you're already using cloud one way or another. And, it, and lastly, Agile Cloud Security assumes security. Having years of experience in a variety of different uh, capacities working with Agile teams and the methodology, I can tell you that that is, in the, in the distance, distant past, something that hadn't been necessarily a foremost priority. You know that it is, and it should be. And in Agile Cloud Security, it will be incorporated in the methodology. Your enemy is already Agile. Why would we um, need to be Agile? Because your en enemy, from the uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of Agile, is already Agile. They are highly focused, motivated, malicious entities. They are nation states. They are terrorists. They are... Um, Criminals that are looking to take us hostage, rob our banks, compromise our critical infrastructure, exploit the weaknesses that we perhaps don't see, can't think of, cannot afford to cover, and don't even imagine as of yet. They are, they're, uh, because of their intent and because of their, because of their evolving uh, ability to uh, harness uh, technology and to exploit our weaknesses, they are uh, they are very focused, they are very creative, and they're very determined. And we can no longer adopt a Maginot Line perimeter defense or or methodology of de of, of defending our. Our, our systems. Just like the Germans went around it in uh, World War II, the, uh, we, we're now in a world of uh, deperimeterized networks, uh, mobile workforce, and we're, we're also uh, in, in the cloud. So it's, it, com it compels us to consider that our adversaries are agile in the respect that they're focused, they're determined, they're increasingly technologically sophisticated and we don't see them coming. So we have to consider a finding a methodology, adopting a methodology so that we can accommodate for, for that to protect ourselves. But what is agile in the context, not the Merriam-Webster definition that I had mentioned for our adversaries, but in the context of what we are talking about today. Agile, again, is, is reality driven. It's not waterfall. So again, the counter example. Waterfall, a, a methodology that I'm sure that many of us here are familiar with, was actually first described back in 1970 by Winston Royce 
of Lockheed Martin as a description of what not to do. One of my, my uh, I learned that back um, from a lecture that a friend of mine gave, one of the original signatories of the Agile Manifesto. And he was saying, waterfall is not the big upfront design, the big upfront requirements. The, the, you can't tell, you cannot tell the future. And that is something that is, is it, that is a methodology not to do. However, it is a popular one today, particularly for large organizations. Agile is customer focused. It's based on communication. It is focused on communication for understanding. Stanford did an experiment on how effective communication is. And they did an experiment where the, the communication was a single mode of communication. It was simply tapping a popular song, and the, it was the other, the test subject's um, uh, um, opportunity to, to guess what that song is. That experiment resulted in a, or yielded an understanding that we only, if with limited and, and single channel communication, we only understand about 3% of what is being communicated, that what we think is being, we're communicating. Which is very significant because if you think about it, that means that there, that, that demands multimodal communication. That demands a, to step it up and to become more empathic, more oriented towards the actual customer needs. And that's what Agile does. Agile harnesses change. It harnesses change for the customer's benefit because that's where new ideas come from. That's where the adaptability to market forces comes from. I've been on projects in the past where the, the methodology uh, uh, followed us to the point where we canceled the project because it was no longer a viable project, given that the competitors, um, there was no way to compete. And it also is respectful and, and um, uh, tracks along the capability of the customers to afford the changes. It's value and risk based. You as a customer need a particular thing for a particular goal and you have a, 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 sp a specific budget. To deliver value to you the Agile team would decompose the, the essential parts and characteristics of what you need and describe them in such a fashion that they can be delivered in, their, in a ranked priority order of value to you, to your business, and risk of failure, which is very important when you're thinking about, in, in thinking in terms of business agility because you need to move quickly with minimum viable products. And with that, sometimes the technology is not ready for prime time. Agile is delivery focused. Early and frequent delivery of valuable working software. That is one of the principles of Agile methodologies. It is the measure of progress that Agile holds. And if I were to ask you, we could grab a cup of coffee afterwards or a beer or whatever, and, and you could, you, I, I, I would, if I were to ask you your opinion of Agile, I would expect that you might tell me it's an undisciplined kid, a kid-like approach. It's for the kids. When in fact, the truth of the matter is, is that it is the most, it, it, it relies upon a backbone of, of a disciplined approach. Its essential principles are based in technical excellence, good design, motivated individuals, and empowered self-organized teams. So you have very smart people who are very talented, experienced, and skilled, working on a very focused and disciplined 
uh, in, working in a very focused and disciplined way on tasks that are directly aligned with what the customer needs in order of priority. It also takes out the, the human error uh, prone chores. A friend of mine told me that once he does something three times, that third time he looks to script that activity. And that is because every time you do something, there is a, always a chance that you may introduce an error into the system. One thing that computers do very well is they do the same thing over and over again without variance. And this leads to a comprehensive and, and a, uh, with the discipline and the delivery focus, this leads to a comprehensive method of delivering software which is automated with automated testing and automated deployments and automated, and you'll see later, um, the introduction of automated security testing as well. To know Agile is, you, you need to have some familiarity with some of the components. There are users, there are stories, iterations, and velocity. Users, who needs the value, the, who needs the product? The stories are a description of what they need. The, the iterations are the time frames within which the stories are developed. And velocity is the unit of measure of progress and burn down of those stories. Stories have, are, are tools. Stories are tools of communication that are of a certain level based on their framing, their structure, so that people of different subject matter expertise and of different experiences and of different skill levels and of interest can all talk about the same topic. Stories are framed in, in, in the following structure. I want some goal, okay? I as a, excuse me, I as a particular kind of user want some goal so that I can achieve some purpose or for some reason. So an example of a story is Wyatt's dad. I want to restrict access to photos so that only family members can see pictures of him restricting access only to particular users. As a cloud infrastructure manager, I want, an in, I want to ha get an inventory of all running cloud services so that I can determine which ones are not authorized for the environment. As a security officer, I want a configurable dashboard so that I can see the events that are happening in the logs immediately. So these are the stories of the basis framed this way. You and I can, with, with your different, our different experiences and our specific subject matter expertise, can talk to this framed unit of, uh, of need from our different disciplines, from our, from our different perspectives. Um, if, I, if you, as a, as a customer or as, a, as, a, as the business, you have a focus on business value. As a, um, a enterprise security architect, I have a particular um, perspective on this same story as well. As a security engineer, you would have a different level of granularity too. The story keeps it at a level where you can all come together to the table to talk about the same value that you want to produce for the client. I see a question. So does this mean that when you're doing a good agile process, you have to have all the players involved from the very beginning? So I, I'm going to ask you to ask that again at the end. Okay. The reason is, is that I can digress on that one. And we could, I could actually take a, probably a good chunk of the, so thank you. The, again, the stories are risk and value prioritized. They're pulled into iterations. These are time boxed, time, uh, times of uh, when these stories are being developed. They're anywhere from one to four weeks. They're highly focused. Typically, they're two weeks. 
And the key, the key understanding here is that the iterations are intended to be without interruptions. I can, I can imagine that if I were to talk to each and every one of you, your, your day-to-day existence sometime in your career, you get interrupted with new tasks, you have to context switch. The point and the purpose of iterations is that it's a focused effort. Stories have point sizes, point sizes that are determined um, based upon either the Fibonacci series or t-shirt sizes of what level of effort it's going to take to develop these stories in, in an iteration. These point sizes are to indicate how big the story is and also to refactor the story if, it is, if its context is too large to fit in within an iteration. And then the velocity is the measure of burn down of points of stories that are being, that, that will, that have completed totally within the period of time, the iterations period of time. So this is a, because the points per story are evaluated based upon consensus from the, the team who is de doing the development. And therefore, the people who actually have the experience and know approximately how long it would take to, to achieve, and they're done within periods, uh, fixed unit periods of time, the iterations, you have a very predictable measure of how quickly work can get done. Because the team as consensus point, or assesses the level of effort for all the stories and you have a high degree of confidence, or you, you will get a high degree of confidence that this amount of work will be done as the velocity for the team will come to an average over time. And this is an average over time that incorporates vacations, turnover, new technology, new, new, stat, new hires. I've seen this, and this is an opportunity, the, with a reality-based measurements, you can fit the product within the overall business's scope of, you know, procurement, advertising, mar marketing, advertising, and release, which is very important because when I worked at Fidelity as a consultant to train their staff on agile methods, they're, they're like, how do we know this is going to fit in our project plan? Because it's reality-based. It's velocity. You have consistency. And I can predict something else for you. You're already in the cloud. You, your employees, your colleagues, O365, Gmail, um, Evernote, Dropbox, etc. We can discover this in, as, a, in, as an organization. We can use Shadow IT to discover uh, unauthorized use of cloud services. However, um, it's inevitable that there, because employees, we all want to be productive. We need, we, we, we find that there's a lot of utility in the advantages that the cloud offers. The vent, your vendors, the vendors, they're already in the cloud. I, during the first night social event, I was, um, I could have sworn that I must have had honey on me because I had a, a bunch of vendors come right at me and they, you know, they were chatting me up and how great their product is and how they're in the cloud. And I, to them, of which, to which I said, that's very interesting. And that would be peeling a lot of the layers of the onion before I could actually get to, the, the, to, to a point where I could trust what you're doing. But this is inevitable. This is inevitable because of the characteristics of the cloud. On-demand self-service, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and measured service. It's because the cloud is a utility. You, it's, it's like the electric company. You turn the lights on, and you, it, you, it gets dark outside, so you turn more lights on. And you burn those lights as long as you need, or as long as you want, and as long as you can pay the bill. And you do this by the, 
just as, as the same as the electric company, you can sign up with a public cloud service provider, provided that you have um, a means of payment, and utilize their services immediately, on demand. And you can do this from here on your mobile devices, broad network access. Resource pooling is what makes the cloud look like it's an, uh, unlimited to your, for your use. There's economies of scale. Amazon adds more compute power per day now than the whole company had back in 1997. So, and they can do that because that's their uh, Amazon Web Services focus, is delivering cloud compute services to its customers. This is interesting. And then there's measured service, which is at the end of the month, the, you know, the, they send you a bill for exactly what you use. Think about that for a moment. How would that be useful to you? Instead of, like, instead of purchasing servers you, where you rack and you cable and you power and you cool, and you have capital expenses which you amateur, amateurize, you have now services which you, you, you turn on the light, you turn off the light, you only use what you need. And that allows you to restrict and parameterize the use of the cloud. This is all very interesting. The use, the, one of the um, uh, stories that um, I think that sums up the, the, the utility of these different characteristics, and these are the ones that are defined by uh, the National Institute for Standards and Technology, is the uh, presentation I saw in Re AWS reInvent back in 2014 by a fellow um, who worked for Coca, who works for Coca-Cola at the time. And they had a Super Bowl promotion that um, they, there was a promo code when, at, when, when the commercial aired and people would you know, submit the, the promotion code. And they had specced out their, their data center for this. They had anticipated the load for this promotion. Now, this is a company that back in 2013 served an, uh, or served an, 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 an per day 1.9 billion requests globally. So they're no, uh, this is not the first rodeo. They know how to do this. What happened is they did not, even despite their best efforts, they did not quite get the, hit the mark. Promo code went out, requests came in, requests started to, uh, to the, the response times uh, stretched to ultimately timeouts and to failures which led them to the cloud, led them to AWS, which then led them to find a 40% operational savings from what they had before. And like he said, they wrote a check back to the business. The point of this is, this is compelling. This is why you're already in the cloud, because it's either you, your organization, your vendors, or your employees are already using it. It's inevitable. So, it's, a, it's an issue of, the, it complements the, the agility uh, reality base. Many of you, all of you already know these, but for the sake of understanding, we have different models of cloud use. They, we have different deployment models and different service models. Deployment models, public cloud, that's the multi-tenant. You, you can look to your left, you can look to your right, and you can see perhaps somebody else in the room who is in the same space on the same public service cl pub public cl cloud service provider as you're using, maybe even perhaps on the same, uh, running their, their uh, code on the same hypervisor. Private single tenant, hybrid's a combination. Hybrid is a hot topic because it exposes the risks of public cloud to the risks of uh, the data center or uh, private assets Community cloud is a cloud focused on a specific purpose, a specific uh, co a co uh, coalition of customers. You can think of that, in, um, an example of that would be um, a blockchain consortium would use a community cloud. Service, the service models, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Um, software as a service, a good example would be uh, Google Apps, now, why, that you know this already, why is this important to mention? Because 
this, if there's nothing else that I want to resonate in your mind, remember this. There is the separation of security responsibilities in the cloud. This is critically important because this is the crux of most of your, most of your uh, consternations when using the cloud. Security of the cloud is the responsibility of the cloud service provider up to the point where you are using the particular service model. If it's a private cloud, that cloud service provider may be you and your data center, so you are completely responsible for all of the security. Using Amazon or Azure, they are responsible for their half of the deal with locks on the doors, biometric authentication, proper human resources, background checks, cages, cabling, um, monitoring, etc., up to a certain level where the service model comes in. The service model sets the watermark for the responsibility distinction between the of the cloud responsibility and the in the cloud responsibility, which in the cloud responsibility is your responsibility. Your responsibility. So public infrastructure as a service, the, the, the delineation of security responsibility would be at the hypervisor. And that would be at the hyper, at the, the, the uh, public cloud service providers hypervisor that they provision the virtual machines that you consume. That means that the virtual machines that you reserve and use with their operating systems and the infrastructure and software stack that you uh, have on them are your responsibility to patch, to harden, and to configure in a way that is secure for your organization's use. When you're talking about platform as a service, say for instance you may, you may have a, a relational database service, they take, care of the hyper, they take care of the virtual machine for you. They take care of the patching. They take care of the replication. Your responsibility is for encryption of the data or configuring the time windows of when patches are applied. And software, of a, software as a service would be your, your responsibility for security in the cloud there would be at the level of the configuration of the software itself. And we had agile, we had cloud, we have security. I gotta say it's a true pleasure to come to this conference, to be in this room with all of you because the, the um, the intellectual density of security knowledge here is, is very impressive. So I'm gonna present a, 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 a thought worm, or your, plant something in your mind to let you chew on this one. Security, we, we don't get in the way, although oftentimes my day-to-day -day existence, I tend to be, I tend to raise issues that um, may seem a bit, um, mm, obstructionist or challenging. Uh, I argue that security is like brakes on a car. It allows you to drive faster. If your data is, is covered in transit, at rest, and at, in use, you, you can develop and serve more. You can be more, you can, your business can be more agile. If you have good network security, you can, you can exploit different deployments more quickly. And this boils down to awareness. Uh, in, in this context, this boils down to awareness, visibility, and control. Because the essential issue, and based upon agility, you have to be technically excellent. You have to know what, what types of vulnerabilities that you have. You have to know what, is, what threats that you're presented with. You have to cover that with visibility of the occurrences and p potential occurrences in your environment, and you have to have control over those. Where this comes in and, and merges in, with, in synergy with agile and cloud is that you, you add a risk management approach to a agile method of using the cloud, where you consider that it's not just risk of failure, but risks that are, in, that are derived from vulnerabilities and uh, the likelihood of potential threats 
exposed uh, to um, bad actors who could exploit them. This is where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Aristotle said that back in the fourth century. It's best uh, known in the modern context by what Dr. Stephen Covey had uh, said in the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People in terms of synergy. It is the creative cooperation amongst individuals. And in this case, we have the creative cooperation amongst disciplines and technologies. So let's look at the synergies between agility and security and how agile can become secure, how you can be more secure in an agile way. First and foremost, you assume security. Now coming from an agile perspective, when you're creating your stories, you think of those stories as being you, 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 you think of those stories as being not just do, uh, units of value delivered to the customer, but potential um, ex uh, additional exposures to uh, the outside world, the exposures to be exploited. It's your responsibility as a security professional to assume the unspoken requirement of security. And in the case of having the, in the case of the uh, agile components that were mentioned before, as whereas we have users, we now have users and abusers, and in a, when we craft our stories, we insinuate the, the a threat modeling and a risk assessment to enhance the overall definition of the stories, and they may even become additional stories themselves if you could please hold your question to the end. Thank you. How does the cloud become more secure? This is, this is actually quite exciting. Well, first and foremost, okay, so the cloud, public cloud, is like daycare. Because you give your child over for a period of time to daycare, and you have to trust that they know what they're doing, that they are a, a, a good and, and caring and safe environment, that they know how to handle problems when they arise. And just like, and, and just like a daycare, we hand our data and our assets and our reputation over to cloud service providers via deployment of our software and assets into their cloud, and we have to figure out how to trust them. So I say you, you go to the market leaders. You go to the, the, the Gartner Magic Quadrant. I think there's two of them in there. There might be three in the Magic Quadrant. Go with that and follow up with your third-party um, uh, assurance reports, compliance reports. That, that's, that's an essential that you need to take home with you. Furthermore, what is, now this is where the magic happens. Just like the, that cloud on the whiteboard, imagine, imaginary whiteboard right here, is that this is an, a scriptable infrastructure. Being a scriptable infrastructure means that you can version control the configuration of your cloud infrastructure. And if you can version control your configuration, you make everything predictable. Everything. Down to the running, the running VMs, everything should be predictable. And that is, um, and combined with the, and, and, for, and, and, and is following from that, a scriptable infrastructure can be automated. And with that automation, what you have is it, it offers you that same capacity of removing the undifferentiated heavy lifting of a data center of having to deploy servers. It takes away the human error prone tasks 
of the maintaining security in the cloud environment because everything is version controlled and everything's configured. This extends to the deployment of your, uh, of your assets into the cloud because not just your cloud environment, it's not just your cloud environment which can be predictable, predictably um, uh, used, but the, the software assets that you, do, that you can deploy to it. And because Agile is a method which focuses on small increments of valuable, delivery of valuable product, you come to, you come in this particular perspective and philosophy, you do, you make, you do delivery of, of value in, in focused measurable chunks. So consider this for a, set, for a moment. If you are deploying valuable working software in a cloud environment that where everything is version controlled, predictable, and tested to the extent where not just the code is tested, but the infrastructure is tested, but the, uh, the, the, the servers w upon which you deploy are, are automatically hardened and patched, and you have a pipeline of deployment which includes testing and security testing, SAST and DAST and pen test. When small changes are deployed, you can do rapid remediation because the blast radius of mistakes that your developers may make would be small. Now let's also look at that from another perspective. Because of the dynamic nature and the scriptable nature of the cloud, say you have a real event with the running production system, you could, pat, you could bootstrap from configuration a whole new production environment you can work with the, or a whole new test environment to then go to production, but you could create a whole new patched environment bootstrapped from, from the configurations, get it running in the cloud, and then switch the DNS over from your existing production environment and, and tear that down. That's the flexibility that you have with the cloud. With, that, that's the, the rapid remediation that it will, can offer you. And furthermore, consult the, the industry. Consult the industry for guidance and for reference. The Cloud Security Alliance Cloud Control Matrix is a good reference model for the different types of controls, different control areas that you need to consider when using the cloud. It extends past uh, perhaps what you may what, that you may need if you are looking at just the public cloud, because it does have human resources and data center and uh, mobile concerns. However, it's a good reference point as well as the CS the CSA's enterprise security architecture, which is was formerly uh, originally known as the Trusted Cloud Initiative. When you first look at that, you might, can, you might think to yourself that it needs more, there needs more meat on the bones. But I invite you to look at it as a, from the perspective of these are the broad stroke areas that, you, that are important and necessary to cover when you, you, when you use the public cloud. Configuration management, again, I can't emphasize it enough because the, the, way, that we've, the way that we see configura configuration management in the cloud here, where it's version controlled, it's scriptable, it's, um, autom it, there's an automa automation aspect to it, it's, um, there's a, combined with security, there's a, a way to um, make everything predictable in your environment that covers three of the five center of inter, uh, for internet security like critical concerns it, it, the, of the top five. So, and, and these center, the CIS controls or CIS um, uh, control areas, Center for Internet Security, the top five, they state that if you cover these, you cover most of the vulnerabilities in your environment. With this formula here, 
you cover three of the five, and that is the inventory of uh, software and of authorized and unauthorized software, inventory of authorized, unauthorized devices, and then the configuration management. You then apply agile thinking, and you then cover the other two of the five, continuous vulnerability assessment and remediation, because agility thinks in that way. The th there, as, you, as you saw demonstrated before, there's a, th a threat model and a risk assessment and an automation that leads to a pipeline that can cover these concerns and then controlled use of administrative privileges is covered because you use technical excellence in security thinking. Agile cloud security. This, this is where I wanted to give you a perspective on how you can become more effective, how you can increase your business agility, how you can go forward with a conceptual roadmap of how do I use the cloud securely? And that would be in this perspective with agile cloud security. To describe this, the, what comes to mind is the Jim Collins book, Good to Great. There were seven different um, discipline areas that uh, he defined that, or that he found that great companies do well. And Agile Cloud Security covers five of those seven areas, those good to great areas. Now we're all here because we want to improve our skills. We're all here because we want to take something back to our organization. Just like when I was told, or when I was instructed, when it was the, the wisdom was revealed to me you know, so many years ago back in, uh, in that whiteboard conversation, you can save minutes and then you can save days of compute, of, of, of you, you, you can have orders of magnitude improvements in what you need to achieve if you think in a synergistic and a structural and, and, and strategic way. And in this case, that led me to think of the good to great because we all just want to do really well. And so the principles that Agile Cloud Security covers is that it covers, it, it confronts, and these are from good to great, it confronts the brutal facts. It's reality-based. It, you know, it, what, what you don't understand about your customer you need to seek an understanding. You can't just deploy something or create something and deploy something because it's five o'clock and that would check off the box. You go the extra mile to, do a, to come back to the customer and, and, and address that there is an ambiguity and you do a prototype to, get to, to deliver to them what they need. And by doing that, you reduce the, tech, the technical and security debt that you have for the project that you're working on. So you confront the brutal facts. Also, it covers the hedgehog concept. This hedgehog concept is what Jim Collins uh, describes. What is your passion? What are you good at? And what makes money? Well, to ag agility is, is based in technical excellence. Agility is based in good design, motivated individuals. So it's about, your, it's about the people and, your, and, and the culture. And, with the culture, there's a culture of discipline. There are technology, uh, technology accelerators, which allow you to accelerate growth. And then finally, Jim Collins has the flywheel, which it's the incremental addition of, a, of, of small improvements over time that in concert with each other offer a uh, compound interest of benefit to you and to the organization. So Agile Cloud Security is a way for you to bring back home a concept roadmap to take a look at what you're doing now and think about how you could do it better, how you can actually improve and meet the, the, the needs, the risks, and the, and the the benefits of, of, of being more agile in a, in, a re, in, a real con, in a real way. So how to be more, how to be securely agile in the cloud? Get reality-based, communication, understanding, being very specific, 
you know, not it, uh, there's communication. It's uh, in person, face to face sometimes, but communication over documentation is one of the agile manifesto principles. Education. We all have, we all uh, either have or want certifications. I, I'm a big advocate for getting uh, various certifications because of the effort that is required to achieve the certification. And this is where the rubber meets the road or where the synergy or the magic happens. Have your security staff be trained in agility. Have them think that they are like the brakes on the car so that they can allow the business to move faster. They are partners in, in pushing forward the advancement of, 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 the, of the business in the marketplace. And if you happen to be already working in an agile space, go send them to CISSP training. Get them security trained so that when they are in their team meetings, their scrum meetings or whatever, they bring the, like I said, the unspoken requirement of security to that project, to the projects that they're working on, and they cross-pollinate with other teams in your organization to elevate the, whole, to elevate the nature of the uh, coverage of security and the, and the understanding of security in, in, uh, in your business. And then I wanted to make the point of DevSecOps. This is a, a manifestation of this thinking where it is an enhancement of DevOps to provide security in the uh, pipelines I've, I've seen this in, in motion, and uh, it's quite beautiful. So let's connect. Uh, I'm, uh, I welcome your questions. I welcome your, your thoughts. I welcome your challenges. And I really appreciate your time today. So this concludes the presentation part. I'm open for questions. Can I go back to the first question? Uh, which was, uh, I think, a question a lot of people would have. Who do you get involved in an agile methodology? Does it have to be, quote unquote, everyone? I, I, thank you. So th it's not everybody that has to be involved, but there's a concept of pigs and chickens. There are, uh, the, see, a pig and a and the chicken want to have a breakfast, uh, want, to, want to have a breakfast diner, right? They want to collaborate, they want to start this diner. And see, the, the chicken wants to point the fingers and direct you know, the, um, the, the, the business operations or the operations of the diner, how, the things, how things go. But see, the pig has a, st a vested interest because the chicken only delivers eggs. So in respect to who has to be at the table, this is where it, it, it inverts the uh, hierarchy where developers typically have the most important say, except for the budget and the allocation of the direction. But you, you want to have your, the people who are working on the project, you want to have the business who needs the project, and you also want to have other, and, and I argue, security trained individuals on the project as well. Please. Yep. What security is often seen as the biggest blocker in agile. Um, what do you think is the, um, I guess the one of the key things that we can do as security professionals to overcome that image and to help um, move towards a, a more agile environment? Thank you for the question. I'm actually going to go back to here, and I'm going to argue that these three points on top would be my answer to your question. To get to to adopt a more real uh, reality based focus, right? So with that in mind, security from a security perspective, we have to be reality focused too. It's our job to enhance the business and their agility. So we can't. Um, we it's no longer an option for us to be uh, ivory tower types. We have to know that we are going to be informing a uh, a, a scriptable version controlled. Auto automated 
um, con a configure, co configuration of a, of a cloud environment and application deployment. So we have, to think, uh, we have to think with agility, which is just basically looking at the reality of the situation. Then getting educated, finding either, finding either agile coaches to come in to, to work with arm in arm, or at least collaborate for cross-pollinization of subject matter expertise with security, um, security staff, or vice versa, but, but also train them so that they can think in, in both, with both hemispheres to enhance that understanding, to, to more or less grease the wheels. And that's where I'm really pointing at bullet point three. I think to enhance, secure, uh, to en to enhance agility with security, you, you gotta have hybrid coaches, or you have to start thinking both ways, or at least you need to bring them both to the table. Is there something else that you, did that answer your question? I think it might be more, um, uh, specific questions for a practical point. I guess my, one of the, so for example, one of the biggest challenges I see in site development is um, um, we still have a, a process where we want to perform a penetration test at the end of the process, and that takes a lot of time. So yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad you asked, okay, that you refined the question. Because that's where the DevSecOps comes in. Because what they'll have is in, in the pipeline, the pipeline extends past, extends past actually the sprint in the respect that some of those activities do take so much longer than you can get it done within a period of, uh, of two weeks in the iteration. So in the next iteration, it would be a story, a security story, to do the penetration testing and to get those results in front of the customer and say, this is what we got um, and this is the risk assessment of the situation. So I, I invite you to, to, do, to investigate DevSecOps for that perspective. Sure, thanks for the question. Uh, do you have a question? Yes. Um, so do you think it's going to be a point where um, DevSecOps or um, Agile development will be like a requirement or a compliance um, subject? Because I think until that point, um, organizations, uh, they, they push back to doing what they used to do, and it, it makes it difficult for security to come in the picture. That's a great question. And actually, that opens up a few different answers. So permit me to um, slice it a little bit and give you a few different perspectives. First, I want to say that this, this formula, this conceptual roadmap, everything is accounted for. Like I said, it's a predictable environment. Everything's accounted, accounted for. In the DevSecOps pipeline, everything is monitored, logged, recorded, tickets, everything. So when your auditor comes and they, they ask, okay, so I need to see um, what's going on, you can show them you got everything accounted for from the tickets to the very deployment and the user acceptance testing with all the security in place. And you have a configured cloud environment and you can show them the code and you explain it to them, of course. You might have to write a narrative, but everything is covered. So now, will, will, ag will agility be a requirement? Well, it depends upon the organization and if they have a need to increase their business agility or their ab ability to penetrate the marketplace and, and, and deliver value. So, but you're right, there, is a, there are uh, tectonic forces that, that, and I think it's based upon misconceptions where they don't quite meet up. But the truth of the matter is, is that when you look into DevSecOps more and you think about agility and you see what the cloud already does, it's an auditor's dream because everything is there, everything. There's no um, you know, 11th hour scramble to come up with documentation. It's in source code, uh, in the version control and in your ticket um, uh, system and in the logs. Did that answer your question? 
Cool. I think we might have no any. Uh, I don't know if we have any or more time, but I'm I'm uh, open to other questions like offline. So thank you for your time. Thanks.